Good morning, Catch the Fire Toronto East. Good morning. What's going on? What's up? What's happening? Oh, it's great to be together again. Yes. Hey, everybody. Why did the great white shark cross the ocean? Uh, okay, why? Because he wanted to get to the other tide. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, everyone. We have been spending the last number of Sundays preaching the clearing in our own conversational, casual style. But we have been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't, want, we don't want to have non-believing believers, nor do we want to have people who believe another gospel. Wow. Uh, because it makes a massive difference mm -hmm. when we embrace the, the, the gospel. You know, it says in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, Paul says that God who said, Let there be light shone the light of the glorious gospel into our hearts. And I love that imagery because at the creation, when God said, let there be light, Paul's saying, keep that in mind when we declare the gospel to you and you receive it, the light of the gospel is coming into your heart and it, and there's a, it is a recreation happening. There's a new creation happening. You see that? And so that's what we want to have happen. We want to preach the gospel so that it lands on soil, to mix my metaphors, to land on soil where it will bear fruit, fruit in terms of transformed lives. People who not just think they know the gospel, but actually have received the gospel, are chewing on the gospel, meditating on the gospel, and it's bringing transformation to their lives as they apply it um, in every aspect of the way they think about themselves, the way they think about God, others, the way that they live their lives out. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So that's what we're, 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 we're after, hopefully under the unction, under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and fire. Come on, Holy Spirit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So we said... There's no condemnation. This fundamentally is the core of the gospel. Uh, I go back to 1 Corinthians, sorry, 1 Colos no, to Colossians chapter 1, verse 21, 22, 23, mm -hmm. where Paul says that before you were aliens, you were uh, enemies of God, but in Christ, in his body, you have, we have been reconciled to God. And now, right now, we stand before Him holy, blameless, without, without accusation. accusation. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm. And on and on and on. God is not counting our sins against us. He's never overlooking our sins, but He's not putting those sins against our credit brilliant mm. and so we spent the first couple of sundays emphasizing that part and we did that deliberately without answering the what yes but yes but because we all have that yes but in our minds and our hearts and so we, we 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 emphasized that part because we want that to get into our identity who we are our sense of worth, our sense of value. Mm -hmm. Can I steal your line? Mm -hmm. Because if we don't know our, our identity, if we don't live from our identity, who we are in Christ, then we will never be truly fulfilled mm -hmm. in our lives, nor will we fulfill the mission that God has called us to be on. We don't want to live purposelessly, nor do we want to live powerlessly. Yes, Amen. exactly. Yes. So uh, today we have Elsie sharing a little bit uh, on, on, on a different twist on this because we did actually respond to the what if questions. Mm -hmm. We, we did. did say that no, 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 this is not a license to sin um, because we are new, creation, new, cre new creations in Christ. We're also called to have an intimate relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And, and then more, re more recently, last week, we talked about the grace of God. 
the grace of God comes to us straight from heaven as we believe like a pipeline that sends oil down the pipeline. The grace of God comes through a pipeline of faith into our hearts and it enables us to live the life that God, mm -hmm. that God is calling us to live. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. And uh, so we address that. And I may also want to touch on another what if. Or is it okay then just sit around and do nothing? Be unproductive, be half half hearted. Well, the short answer is no. Definitely, De definitely no. Definitely not. No. Uh, but before we get to that, Elsie has some thoughts mm -hmm. and a wonderful word that she would like to share with us. Yes, and and before we do that, mm. um, we're going to read from Second Corinthians five, right, right. Uh, uh, verses nine to twenty one, and I want you to be thinking about um, uh, the different motivations for us, uh, the, the purpose behind uh, what we do, why we work. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so I'm going to start verse, at verse 9. It says, We make it our goal to please the Lord, yes. whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment yes. seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether mm -hmm. good or bad. So I just highlight here, there are rewards and consequences. Yes. Depending on how we respond. Yes. Since then we know what it is to fear the Lord, mm. we try to persuade others. And uh, the fear of the Lord is also a very good motivator. And we're yes. going to unpack that a little bit uh, uh, with you. Yeah, the fear of the Lord has to be clarified for us. Yes. Yeah. So and you'll do that. I will do that. Now, verse 14 and 15 says, For Christ's love compels us. Mm. And that's another motivator. Beautiful. Come on. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all, all died. died. And he died for all that those who live should no oh, longer God. live for themselves, but for him who died for them and who was raised again. And then verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, mm. the old has gone, the new is here, and all this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. This speaks very loudly of uh, having purpose, doesn't mm. it? We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though as God though. were making his appeal mm. Through us. through us. Talk Come about on. purpose. Talk about being on mission. Amen. Uh, so let's go back to verse 17. Family on mission. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Um, verse 17 says, I'm a, new cre I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm a new creature in Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, now, because of that, I have rights and privileges. I didn't have that before. Uh, but now I do. Now I belong. Now I'm a child of God. And I have an inheritance that will never spoil or fade or perish. That's mine. Um, also, I can participate in his divine nature. His, when I asked Jesus into my heart, he came in. He lives yeah. there. Um, he, is, uh, he gives me that sense of security uh, He's the one who tells me who I am. Uh, this belongs to me. Um, as, because I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus, I have this amazing relationship um, to, to walk in. Because of it, I have authority. Uh, I have power. Uh, this is from John 15, that if I am walking in a right relationship with, with Jesus, with the Father, that um, I'm going to be able to pray with authority and know that he is going to back me up. 
Yeah. So the power of the Holy Spirit flows. And, um, and so verse 17 says, I'm a new creation in Christ, but I also have responsibilities. He has made me a new creation. I have right standing with him, but it is for a purpose. And verse 18 and 19 tell us what that purpose is, that we are ambassadors of Christ, for Christ. Yeah. So we bring kingdom influence uh, with us mm -hmm. wherever we go. And I mean, wherever we go, mm -hmm. we are agents of Christ. And uh, just as Jesus told his disciples as he was um, about to leave this earth. Uh, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel and make disciples. And that is our mandate, that we are to share the love of Christ as though he were right there um, drawing people to himself. And we get to live in such a way that, that people are attracted to Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, and we are also commissioned to, to bring sons and daughters to yes. maturity. Yes, yes, yes. To equip them, to love them. Mm -hmm. um, verse 9, let's go back to verse 9, says, We make it our aim to please Him. Now, I already bring pleasure to Him. We've talked about that in previous passages. Um, I bring pleasure to Him because of who I am. Mm -hmm. So... Um, but I can also bring pleasure to Him by fulfilling my love assignments. And, Beautiful. and that is, uh, you know, that, that quote that Ramesh just said, um, it says, if we don't live out of our identity, which means who I am or in who Christ. we are in Christ, then we won't be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to share that... Um, when I was a young child, mm -hmm. I think I was about uh, eight years old, uh, I asked Jesus, I had this great conversation with him. I said, uh, what would you like me to do when I grew up, when mm -hmm. I grow up? Now, I already knew that I was loved. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, why would I have asked him that question? And, and immediately he said, I want you to be an artist and I want you to tell people about me. And it was the most joyous thing mm -hmm. um, to think uh, because he'd already put inside of me this creative yeah. uh, desire. Mm -hmm. And and I'm so, gift. yeah, and, and so right there, I had purpose. I wasn't going to, uh, you know, I wasn't thinking I've got to become something. I was thinking, Oh, he has something for me to grow into, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what happened. Um, I didn't, I didn't know all the details of that. I, I had to learn my craft. I had to uh, learn many things about it. But even more importantly, he had character development going on in me at the same time. He was growing me up, and so the, when the time came for me to step into that purpose. Um, I could reflect him in my gifting yeah. because he'd Fantastic. already been working yeah. in my heart. And so... Um, you were anointed, weren't you? You are anointed. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that is my prayer, that people would be drawn to him uh, because of whatever uh, is coming from my mouth, from my hands, my feet, wherever I go. From your artwork. That's right. Um, Ephesians 2 says that we are saved not by our own works, but by grace. Yeah. And so our salvation is not what is in question here. But it says in that passage that we are saved to do good works. So uh, we are His workmanship and we get to work. And um, so... Uh, it just boils down to the fact that I work from a place of being loved yes. rather than working for love. That's the main thing. Right that there. is the main thing. The main motivation. That is the Father heart mm -hmm. right there, if you were to put it into a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He wants us to know how deeply He 
he loves us and enjoys us mm -hmm. and sees us. He sees us so differently than we see ourselves. And so we need to get to know ourselves as his new creation, as that new creation in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. But now I want to talk um, about the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 9.10 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning, the beginning of, of wisdom. wisdom. Now, in my little life, I have needed a lot of wisdom. And if you want wisdom, then you need to go to the source of wisdom. And I realized uh, early in life that um, I needed to get to know God based on who He really is, not based on what I would like Him to be. Beautiful. I love that. And God has created us in His image, and sometimes we decide to return Him the favor, <laughs> and we want to make Him in our image. Uh, that's the truth. But speaking of the truth, the spirit of truth leads us into all truth. And if we really want to know Him the way that He is, uh, He will. He is more than willing uh, to take us in that direction. But we have to have the fear of the Lord or we won't have access to wisdom because wisdom is coming to him and saying, uh, what do you want? Where do you want me to go? It's guidance, it's counsel, mm. it's deliverance. It's uh, There has to be a surrendering of our will back to him before um, we can proceed. And so the fear of the Lord keeps us in right relationship with Him so that we keep our heart right and we can follow His leading. Yeah. There, are, um, uh, there are consequences for not responding to God. If, if we ask Him for wisdom and then we ignore it, we, we've seen uh, where things uh, aren't so good in our lives. And then we've also seen that when we have responded, just how amazing uh, our path, our steps can become. And, uh, and the, the, the word that says all things work together for good to those who love him, that is true. Even though things might be messy, if we're coming to him for wisdom, he is able to make sense of things that don't even make sense. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, 2 Corinthians 5.14, the other motivator that we want to talk about, love. is that the love of Christ Compelling. compels us. Uh, we have become ambassadors. And what is an ambassador? An ambassador is someone who is sent from one country to another and represents the leadership of the kingship of that country. Yeah. And we are now citizens of heaven. Yes. We're still planted on earth, yes. but we get to bring uh, into uh, where we live, we, we bring that influence and we are here to reflect Christ. And, uh, you know, I want Jesus to receive the reward of his suffering. Amen. Amen. And I also want to know people the way that he longs after them. And uh, if, if love is going to compel me, then I'm going to be needing to come to him and, and to find out his heart about people. And that is where so many of our giftings actually begin to be matured. When we ask him for wisdom, we ask him for knowledge, we ask him for understanding, we ask him uh, to show us who, the, who people are. And he is the one that releases his love and his heart in our lives this is very motivating to be able to step into that relationship yeah. with him and so um, the the three main motivating uh, uh, purposes are uh, to walk in the fear of God uh, to know that there are rewards mm -hmm. and that there that love compels us yeah and if you want a good illustration of this, you just have to look at the family unit because the church is a pretty good uh, illustrate, illustration of a family. Uh, you have um, pastors, you have leaders, 
Um, and there yes. are, yes, we, yes, let's go back to the family metaphor. Um, parents give their children uh, boundaries. Mm -hmm. There are boundaries there for protection, for nurture. Children don't feel safe if they don't have uh, certain boundaries. Yes. Never abuse. But there are, uh, there are rewards for responding to authority mm -hmm. and there are consequences. Mm -hmm. And uh, also in a, in a family, that is where you have that, you learn that sense of belonging, you, uh, you find out who you are uh, by engaging and interacting with each other, and, um, and you find out your purpose, you find out what your gifts are. Yes. Because that, it takes other people around you, Beautiful. those gifts are for other people. Come on. Uh, God gives us gifts, but those gifts are, are purposed to be given away. Um, to serve others. Yes, to serve others. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're just touching and highlighting uh, how uh, God has worked in us to will and to do of His good pleasure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what else do you have to share with us? Oh my goodness, that was so good. I was just feasting on that, my darling. Well, thank you. Father, we just want to bless our people, the ones who are listening to this, Lord, the ones who have uh, hungry hearts, attentive hearts to hear what you are saying to them in this hour. Lord, mm. I pray that you would minister deeply wow. to them, deeply to all wow. of us. Lord, take this revelation deep into our hearts so that it makes a difference mm -hmm. to the way that we live our lives. Lord, we believe that the preaching of the gospel, the preaching of your word, is what transforms mm, our hearts. Yes, yes. We don't want pity statements or, or, or just <sighs> empty words. Lord, we want the, the anointing of God and the power of the Spirit to take the truth of God's Word and make it live in our hearts mm -hmm. so that we become transformed people, both individually and collectively yes. as a body. So come, Holy Spirit, yes. help us. Bless Elsie's Word today. Wow. Breathe on it. Plant it deeply into our spirits. Thank you, Jesus. We trust you for wow. the fruit, Lord God. Well, wow. I'm just uh, hearing, uh, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit talking mm. about uh, there's someone and, and you feel like you're out in an ocean and you're so sick of yourself. Mm. You feel like you can't keep your head above water. You are being pulled down like there's ball and chain on your ankles. You feel like you're mm. so uh, weighed down by yourself. Mm. It's all about you and that you feel so helpless wow. to, to be able to come out of that. And, um, and I heard the scripture um, that you, in God's eyes, as a, when you put your faith in Him, your eyes come off of yourself. Mm. And and that you are without blemish. There's no accusation wow. and, and no condemnation. Wow. And the Lord wants you and is wanting uh, you to trust Him, that uh, you keep your eyes searching for Him, and He is, uh, he is rescuing you. He is going to lift you out of that ocean of agony and immerse you into the ocean of His love. And uh, so, uh, Lord, that, yeah. that this individual uh, will begin mm. to find out the true self, that new creation in Christ Jesus, that the old is gone, the new mm. has come. And the, uh, we just bless your spirit, man, to come to life today. It seems like this is about somebody who has minimal faith. You've had faith in, in Christ but you haven't felt that it's all that personal. And he's mm -hmm. saying today that changes. Oh, he is drawing you deep, and, deep, and deep, he deep. is going to be showing mm -hmm. you in very tangible ways mm -hmm. that you belong to him. Yeah. And, but, but what he's asking is that you trust him, that you keep your eyes on him, that he's going to be revealing himself. And uh, don't stop looking because he is a rewarder uh, for those who search for him in Jesus name 
quo. Amen. 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 Mm. Wow, Father, I, we just also mm. bless each and every one of us that, mm. that the ambassador mantle that is on us to release the love of Christ wherever we go, even in secret, in the prayers and heavenly realms, the ambassador aspect that, that uh, the will of God is being released through sons and daughters of the Most High God and that His power is being released. And even today, I feel the Lord is saying, the Spirit of the living God mm. uh, is on you, is in you, and He is setting captives free. He's saying, don't be weary in well-doing. Keep your eyes on me mm. because I am flowing through you. My grace is enabling you to change as well as those around you. And uh, there is a, a beauty that he is wanting to emerge from his body that has never been seen in the world before. And, and he is working in our hearts to will and to do of his good pleasure. He's saying, don't be afraid of discipline. Don't be afraid of wisdom. Don't be afraid of coming to him and asking for wisdom from That's above right. and that relationship that will guide you this way and that way because he is protecting you, but he wants you to fulfill your purpose. Yeah. And there are many today that are listening and you felt purposeless, but after today, and he is setting a fire in your spirit, wow. man, that you are going to know who you are. You are an ambassador for Christ. And there is a mantle that will rest on those who are seeking uh, to live for him and to fulfill their purpose in Christ. There is a Luke 4, 18 mantle on you. You will see the captives set free. Eyes come uh, out of blindness. Uh, darkness fleeing because of the light of Christ being released through you, the love of God compelling mm. you. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. Jesus, we just love you. Lord, we are so grateful to you for what you've done, how you've revealed what God really is like, our Creator God, our Father. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. Thank you for giving your life. Thank you for sending your spirit. Thank you for making heaven accessible to us because of your great sacrifice. Lord, we want to live short of everything that you have for us. Lord, I ask that the light that would shine in our oh. hearts and it would displace every single lie yes. that we have believed even from our mother's womb or even beyond that. Mm. Lord, would you remove those lies about who you are, about who we are, what we need to do in order to be uh, in right relationship with you. Lord, help us, help us by the power of your spirit. Let the light of your glorious gospel shine into our hearts, into our minds, go to the root of every single lie and displace them by the power of your breath, by the mm. power of your light. In Jesus' mighty in name. In Jesus' gorgeous name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 <sighs> first of August. First Sunday of August, everybody. Whew. It's a great month to be born. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> Happy birthday, Pastor. <laughs> August 9th, everybody. <laughs> we celebrate you. Yeah, thank okay? You. All right. Okay. Okay, love you guys. See you on the Zoom. Or the park. <laughs>